to Russians, names like Vladimir, Svetlana and Olga have positive connotations. To Americans, these names mean only one thing. Foreigner. In my last video, I ranted about how most English speakers mispronounce Olga as Olga. But the name Olga is hardly the only casualty of this Indo-European fuster cluck we call English. There's the name Helga, which also uses a soft L, but is spoken by Americans like hell, followed by a choking noise. Ugh. The history of the name Olga wouldn't be complete without Helga, so we'll talk about Helga first. Let's travel back in time to 900 AD, about a thousand years before modern conveniences like GPS or splinter-free toilet paper. Helga was a common name in medieval Scandinavia, where the Vikings lived. The Vikings spoke Old Norse and influenced many languages across Europe. That's a polite way of saying that the Vikings violently imposed their vernacular onto their vanquished victims. They spread the influence of Old Norse so widely that even today, Helga is still a common name in parts of Europe. One group of Vikings, known as the Rus, brought their names and language to Eastern Europe, including parts of modern-day Belarus and Russia. Some of the local Slavs lived in peace with the Viking visitors, and the rest of them died in pieces. In any case, the Rus assimilated into the Slavic population, and the name Helga eventually became Russianized as Olga. There was a plague, and an Asian invasion, and everyone died. The Russians eventually got tired of being on the receiving end of pointy metal objects, so they started returning the favor. Over 500 years, the Russian Empire grew into the third largest empire ever known through diplomacy and the exportation of military-grade misery. By 1895, it controlled more territory than the Roman, Ottoman, and Macedonian empires combined. The name Olga thus marched eastward, wielding the Sword of Conquest. As the empire grew, Russian ideas, literature, and poetry spread westward and became popular throughout Europe. The name Olga thus waltzed westward, bearing the pen of fine art. The Russian empire reached the height of its power around the time splinter-free toilet paper was invented. The names Helga and Olga became popular even in the United States, but only around the turn of last century. Calling your baby girl Olga has become so unpopular that the US government stopped recording data for this name after 1996. Out of the 2 million girls born in the US that year, only 198 were named Olga. If you name your kid Helga or Olga in the US today, you might as well send them to school with a flashing neon sign that reads, Foreigner. If you want to spare your child's dignity, you can move to Europe, where both names remain somewhat popular today. I hope you enjoyed this brief lesson on the origins of the Russian name Olga. If anyone knows how to speak Viking, please mock me mercilessly in the comments for how I pronounce Helga. The Svidania, my friends! I hope you enjoyed this brief history lesson on the decline of civilization since the advent of splinter-free toilet paper. I can see your bottle. Is that a problem? Why did you leave say with finality in sorry, there? Sorry, sorry. What the hell? One could have... I'm like Russianizing this. <laughs>